Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Tony Yoka's title aspirations have absolutely gone up in smoke courtesy of a 42-year-old past prime, Carlos Takam, who outworked, out-hustled Tony Mediocre because the performance was just so-so. And there are so many things to talk about. One, about the performance, but two, his setup, where he's going, and we'll get into them. But first, I guess you have to say full credit to Carlos to come. As I said in my pre-fight video, you know what you're getting with him. He's a gatekeeper who will always uh, give his best. He will make you work. And if you're not good enough, he can beat you. And that was the case here. He was the one that was just throwing more shots. Tony Oka just wasn't doing enough. Not enough work. Too tentative just not enough punches, too much one-off punching, looked a bit bereft of ideas, and there was no real urgency, even later in the fight. And that tentativeness, and I would also say, uh, because I was thinking about this compared to some earlier fights, he just doesn't seem to have the confidence that he once did. And I think that there's a real possibility that the ghost of Martin Bacoli, the, the beating that Bacoli put on him almost a year ago, was uh, weighing on his mind in that fight. That he didn't want to overcommit, he didn't want to do too much, didn't want to let his hands go. I mean, how many combinations did you see? It was just non-existent. Working the odd jab, the odd right hand, the odd shot to the body, but not enough. Carlos de Calm would return in kind. And... I guess we should talk about the judging. One judge at 96 94? Disgraceful. Even 96 94 is cutting it far too close in my book. Sure, the right man won in the end, but those judges were really trying to give Tony Yoka every scrap of credit they could to give him rounds. The first couple of rounds, relatively even after that, it was basically all to calm all the time landing more doing more and it was the eye-catching work that was from to calm for the most part i think there was a couple of memorable right hands by tony yoka but he didn't have everything on them there might have been a, a sharp little counter but followed by nothing and that was the problem not enough of anything from tony yoka to make a real dent on carlos to calm and in fact the whole fight in general it was just mediocre it wasn't good 42 year old past prime um, to come who's been a nearly man in the heavyweight division and Tony Oka didn't dominate him and it's clear and I said this ahead in ahead of the fight Tony Oka is an on top fighter and Carlos to come never let him get on top never let him settle into the sort of rhythm that Yoka likes to get into and the pace that Yoka likes to fight at and as a result Yoka didn't seem to settle didn't seem to be able to do what he wanted but it wasn't always clear what he wanted to do and he wasn't really following the instruction of Virgil Hunter he didn't seem to be able to implement what Hunter was telling him in the corner even late on Hunter was imploring him to work harder do more you got to take these last few rounds and he just sort of limped towards the, the finish line. Maybe it wasn't the beating of uh, that he got against Martin Bacoli where he just looked to survive. But he didn't lay it out there. There was no guts. There was no glory. There was no going out on the shield. There was no, in the final minute, really let his hands go. Meekly, it just ended. And when he put his hand up to signal to the crowd that he thought he won, and obviously all boxers sort of do that, I thought, in his heart of hearts, he knows he probably hasn't done enough. Although one judge was uh, obviously, you know, maybe brown envelope territory to give him six of the ten rounds. Absolutely disgusting. But you have to say some, some chickens have come home to roost here for Tony Yoka. He has regressed. He hasn't advanced in the way that we thought he might. His uh, prospect phase of his career was going along nicely, but just didn't, you know, push on like he should have. He's got the skills and ability, but it does look like he's suffering from a crisis of confidence. And maybe there is a bit of glass in that chin too. And certainly there were moments where I was thinking his head movement is just terrible. 
Carlos Takam was able to find the target so much because Yoka wasn't moving his head. It was there to be pinged and it was getting popped by Carlos Takam. But this whole fighting in France thing, you know, this narrative of wanting to bring a heavyweight title back to France and all this sort of stuff, the you know insistence in staying there, I think it has hurt his career, as has the inactivity. So, I mean, you can go back to that fight a year ago. They wouldn't be fighting Martin Bacoli if they had other options that they could have brought along. But they had to, you know, settle for that caliber of opponent because no one else was going to travel there. And Bacoli took the opportunity and really that was the, the, the downfall and seemingly, I think this has had knock-on effects into this fight here with Carlos de Khan who at this stage is, you know, still a decent gatekeeper. But if you've got aspirations of being a, a heavyweight contender of note, challenging for world titles, you really have to do better than, um, you know, trying to coast along against the 42-year-old Carlos to come, hoping that the judges are going to rob the other guy and give you the decision. I mean, I think there's a difference between the fight we saw with Makhmadov and to come and Yoker and to come. Makhmadov was going after to come. Makhmadov was trying to hurt to come. Makhmadov was going for blood. Tony Yoka was just going for a point. And that's the problem in mindset with some of these heavyweights. They're still stuck in the amateur mindset. And I think that I have to question as well, the link up with Virgil Hunter. I think it has to be reassessed. But maybe there's sufficient sort of uh, psychological damage and the ghost of uh, the past performance against Martin Bacoli that we can't get any better from Joker at this point. If he is going to try to rebuild and try to make a run to the heavyweight title, he's going to have to make some changes. He's going to have to probably get a new trainer. He's going to have to get a new setup. He's going to have to leave France for one. He's going to have to actually probably go to the UK or more likely the US and he'll probably have to be in uh, some decent sort of, I would say, fights of a similar ilk. I think fights with the likes of Otto Valin, Agi Kabiel, top rank could um, have him in against uh, Kubrat Puliev. Maybe that's a step too far at this point. If I Jagba, but I think with the, the danger with the puncher now, Tony Yoko takes a shot, he goes into a shell. But I was looking at the performance going, nah, this is, he doesn't seem elite. He doesn't seem like a guy who's going to cut it and make it. We've seen the flashes of talent in the past and what he could do and the, the confidence and the cheese mode, the beatings that he's put on a few fighters like Dave Allen, for example. That's all gone now. Beaten out of him seemingly by Martin Bacoli a year ago. And the, the extra weight, career heaviest weight here by almost seven pounds, didn't help him. Arguably, it probably made it easier for Carlos to come because I think Yoka had to manage his energy a little bit better because he wasn't used to carrying that extra rubble over the 10 rounds. Terrible judging again, which seems to be standard for a Yoka fight. Um, you have to question, does Yoka have the passion, the fire? It certainly doesn't seem like it. Does he need a new team? Because it appears he does need a new approach, some new thinking. But overall, his stock is down. The world title aspirations seem, you know, gone, dead and buried, up in flames, however you want to characterize it. And for Carlos to come, let's pay homage to him for a moment. He went in there. He did his job. Often he's the guy in a somewhat close fight where he's on the losing side of things, but it's always a clear win to the other person. But it was close and competitive generally. He got this one. He pulled one out. And this guarantees a few more paydays for him. So, you know, hats off to Carlos to come. Got to respect someone who puts in that level of graft. But the fact that Tony Oka looks so uninspired, so average, was able to be outworked by a 42-year-old past prime and well past prime, um, Carlos to come. Jeez, Tony Oka, what's happened? What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.